I'm going to quickly show you how to add in this highways link road between these two pre-designed roundabouts. The northern roundabout we've shown being designed in a previous video where we uh, tied into an existing road here, bent a new road to a new roundabout and then tied back into the road on the eastern edge. So to create this new link road I am going to put in a new centre line and we're going to start it at the southern roundabout centre point by using the snapped arc centre. Now I'm going to use my construction line extend tool to help me find the IP position of this long sweeping bend. Now this long sweeping bend is made up of two transition curves and one arc and the arc IP will not match the actual uh, direction of the two um, straights at either end of the curve. So I need to help, I need to use the construction tools to help me find it. So I'm going to snap to the uh, intersection point here of these two crossing lines and then I'm going to zoom in to the northern edge and we see we actually have a small uh, curve here so I'm going to use my snap to arc to find the IP position of that one little arc here because it bends it into the roundabout so I'll then use my snap to center point to pick that center point again. So now I have the um, center line going from one roundabout to the IP to the other roundabout I want to now curve that out. Now I know the transition length and I know the curve uh, radius so I'm going to just right click and hit enter radius. So I want a, a radius of 720 meters and I want a transition length on the start which is the southern side uh, to be 100 meters uh, and I want the exit to be a different transition length so I want to choose the exit um, transition length, the end transition length to be 20 meters. So we have a single 720 meter curve in the middle and we have on the southern edge we have a 100 meter transition to uh, go from straight to that arc and on, on the northern edge here we have a 20 meter uh, transition to go from that arc to the roundabout. So now we can zoom in and we can have a look and yes it matches precisely to the layout. So if I close the toolbar we'll see that that then uh, closes the uh, construction lines and I can then see my center line matching everywhere. What I want to do now is add my channels, curbs and footways to this uh, center line to make it into a road and I'm going to use the pick buttons and my snaps to help me position and find those widths and offsets. So it's a 3.65 meter half width carriageway and there is a cycleway on the side which is going to be three and a half meters wide. So I will click OK on that one and that has now made my road. So I can go and open the 3D view and we can have a look at the entire length of this from one side to the other. You can see the roundabouts at either end and you can see the bypass uh, highways link road going off into the distance. We can see also here that we are actually cutting into the ground. So uh, the initial leveling um, starts at the uh, level of the roundabout over here and joins uh, via a linear grade to the um, uh, northern roundabout here. So what I want to do now is go to the long section view and have a look at that and, and make some changes. So yep, we can see we're just going from one roundabout to the other with a straight grade. So I can zoom in, have a look at the level on this roundabout and notice that it is actually below the ground and I want to raise mine up a little bit to make sure it is above the existing ground. So that's the uh, southern end. Let's have a look at the northern end and do something similar. And you'll notice as I make these changes, I'll just zoom in on the 3D view, you'll see as I make this change to this roundabout here, to just this one arm, it will tilt the whole roundabout and make a change throughout, which is quite a powerful tool. Just move point, bring it up. I could just make some additional changes here. And you can see it is uh, moving the entire roundabout up. It's tilting the whole roundabout so I can find the best position for it and then I can move on to the rest of the vertical alignment. So now I want to add in some vertical IPs. I'm just going to do that by adding a, uh, some vertical IP positions in. I'll pick them from the, uh, from the long section here. Get some initial positions in. And from here I then can set, have a look at the, uh, the gradients and I can see that's one in 111. Uh, then got one in minus 83. And the last one is on the right hand side is one in 212. So it's highlighting a red because it is outside of our specification. Um, in this particular road, I have the specification set to uh, one in 10 or one in 150. So no steeper than one in 10 and no flatter than one in 150. So it's letting me do that, but it's highlighting where I go outside of that specification.
So I need to look at the gradients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to enter gradient on this side here and I'm going to say well I want the gradient intersection so I want this to be an intersection of uh, 1 in 100 and I want the other side to be 1 in minus 90 and that has now moved those positions over. And if I wanted to, I could even then change that again and go back in enter gradient and say, actually, I want that to be 1 in 150 uh, to 1 in minus 90. So that'll uh, drop this point down. It'll actually bring it slightly over here. It'll make this flatter and uh, keep this uh, gradient the same. So you can see now that we've brought it down. We are now uh, still um, filling in most of this area, but we are now much closer to the top of this hill. I'm going to do the same on the other IP that I put in, so enter gradient and gradient intersection. So I want 1 in, one in minus 90, so I'm going to keep this grade here, but I'm going to make this 1 in 150. Okay, that has found the new position, and we'll have a look at those gradients. So yeah, they have definitely taken 1 in 150, 1 in minus 90, and the last one is 1 in 150 again. So now I want to put in my vertical curves, so I can right click and enter curve length or curve parameter. So I can put in a curve length here if I wanted to, or in this case, I'm gonna type in a K value. So this one, I know I want the K value of 182 because my design speed is 60 miles an hour. So that is the ideal K value for that road speed. And then on this one, I can right click and do the same. And I can then also specify a single um, K value of, well, I can't choose 182 because my maximum K value is 111. So what I can actually now do here is specify, use the max K value. So this would be, uh, I think the one stop below that speed of 182 would be down to 100, and, well, it'd be 100, I think, or 110. So um, that is uh, within the realms of OK for my, my design here. So I'm going to be, I'm going to accept that. And now I have my two long sweeping bends, vertically that is. And they can come out of that. And you can see the whole roundabout now, This uh, the whole uh, design is now mostly above ground. You can see there's a couple of areas where I'm just clipping the existing ground, but that is okay for me. Right, so once we've done that, the next stage is to edit the junction at the northern and the southern arm. So let's start with the southern because we're down here. And what I can do is I'm going to my roundabout tools, edit roundabout junction. And then I can type in the um, radius values for these fillets here. So I know the exit needs to be a 50 meter curve. The entry side actually needs to be a compound curve. It's uh, locked on the ICD because I know where the uh, curve hits the ICD so I can choose that position. So let's hit pick, use my snaps to help me in this case and just choose that position where this curve touches the ICD. So this value, uh, this radius needs to be 30 meters. And this one needs to be 200 meters. And there we go, they've both gone white and they now show that they are matching the existing layout here. So the next thing I need to do is update the entry and exit widths here, road widths, so that it will size the splitter island. So the exit side needs to be seven meters and the entry needs to be 7.3 meters. And you can see that's now made those changes. Click OK, and it'll update the uh, the design for us, and we can then have a look at what's going on. So we can see here that the uh, the splitter island does not match the layout. Uh, we well, Site 3D designs the splitter islands to the DMRB spec, where we are tangentially touching the center line, going through the entry width that we've requested, and then t continuing to tangentially touch the inner island. The exit is just a parallel copy. Um, so you can see here the one on the layout uh, didn't touch the center line at all at this point here. Um, it actually crossed over the uh, uh, crossed over the center line, so we would have potentially have had any uh, some um, sort of water retention and leveling issues in this particular area here. So that's why we use the uh, DMRB spec. So I'll go to the northern arm, and we can see we need to. Uh, uh, adjust this one as well. So let's go in and edit that arm and we can set this one to be a uh, 35 meter curve 
and the uh, the exit also needs to be a compound curve so the exit fillet needs to be changed to compound curve ICD and I need to choose where on the uh, the roundabout that actually hits so let's have a look it's going to be where this curve here touches the ICD it is going to be there so now I want to change this one to a 75 meter radius and then I want to change this one to a 252 meter radius and now we can see we are now matching the layout and as with the other arm we want to adjust the uh, entry and exit width so that the splitter island is sized correctly so the air tree width needs to be a uh, 7.6 meter and the exit needs to be a 6.6 .6 meter and we want to update this uh, splitter radius here this corner radius so I'm going to manually choose that one to be one meter and there we go that has now updated that whole design so click OK and you'll see this roundabout then update on the 3D view as well as on the plan view so going forwards the uh, next thing we want to do is adjust the channels so you'll notice uh, starting again down the uh, southern side you'll notice that the channel width is shown as uh, differing along the road this is because the road um, design spec changes uh, from the roundabout to the actual link road itself so what we're going to do is we're going to go and edit the channel widths so let's edit that channel hit widening and use snap to point and I'm just going to say widen from here to here click OK and that'll then widen all the way along you can see the orange line going all the way along and I want to narrow it down at the other end and follow the layout so again we have a uh, the layout here showing that it uh, narrows back down so hit uh, add widening or add narrowing and using my snaps help me position those on the drawing. Uh, I need to check that the values that I'm click I'm selecting are correct. So that should be uh, 4.65 um, to uh, 3.65 as well. And what I can do here is then I can say, well, this is quite a uh, subtle change in direction, and uh, the foreshortening effect may give a uh, an effect like a, a, a cusp on this one, so I want to curve these out. So uh, this one here is quite a very, well, it's a very slight change in direction, so I'm going to put in a larger radius of 600 meters on this one, just to smooth that out, to make a visual effect. And this one I'm going to, because it's slightly more um, sort of angular, I can make that a lower, ra a lower radius of something like 300 meters. You can see that it is actually just smoothing that out. And then if I hit apply, that makes those changes on the entire side. It's made the change all the way along. Now I can do the same again. So I'm going to edit the other side and do my widening. And I'm just going to uh, pick here to here. And I'm just going to go and quickly get down to the uh, southern arm. Click OK on that one. And then add another one in from that point through to that point. Again, just verifying those values that I'm, I'm happy with them. This time, these are slightly uh, larger change in direction, so I can just make these both 300 meter curves to smooth that out and make it aesthetically pleasing. Hit finish, and we have our uh, road put in. So now, uh, having a look at sort of a more overview look, what we can do now is we can add in some interfacing. So let's add the interfacing tool and select the road. Um, I can now design a uh, interfacing on the side of this uh, link road. I can give it different grades. I can add in some steps if I wanted to uh, have a changing grade as it goes down. Uh, but in this case, I just want a one in three, and I'm going to choose it for all roads. Click OK, and that's now gone in and done interfacing, which is our sort of uh, grading to existing ground throughout the whole lot. So I can zoom in down here, and you will see that it's grading down here. So if I zoom in, you'll see all the way along, it is now grading all the way along. So what I want to do now is very quickly just go to the surface menu and also, yeah, well, we can go to the surface menu and we can do some cut and fill volumes for the whole lot or I can go to my road menu and I can choose the volumes button on here and it'll give me a uh, rundown report, a volume report for the roads themselves. So we can see the cut and fill volume calculations, the road surface area and the path surface area based upon the uh, the items on our drawing. Let me just click OK and there we go. Thank you.